Hello, medium people. Today, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and I'm actually going to take one of my favorite authors from Medium and dissect what they do, how they achieved fame, etc., etc. For my first person, I'm actually going to talk about Chris Gage. Chris Gage has 38,000 Medium followers. She is a top writer in seven different categories, and she actually started writing on Medium in April of 2017. So that's all she's needed to build up a following of 38,000. And I just thought that it would be amazing to dive into like what her strategy is, like what she does well, and why her posts take off. So one, I'm going to talk about her headlines, two, I'm going to talk about her cover images, three, I'm going to talk about how she structures her content, four, I'm going to talk about her style, and then I'm finally just going to wrap it all up and basically give you the gist of why I think she does so well on Medium. To do this, I basically took her top 15 posts of all time, wrote down the headlines, read each and every post, and tried to figure out if there were any sort of like things that she kept doing or any sort of like comparisons that I could make between the different articles. Chris is actually a good friend of mine. I actually interviewed her for my Grow Your Blog Summit uh, back in March of 2018. So uh, first of all, let's go over some headlines. So basically what I did was I wrote down all 15 headlines from her top performing posts and I dissected them from like a literal standpoint, like what are the words that she uses? And then I dissected them from like the psychological aspect of it. Like why do these headlines work so well? But basically here's just some of like the hard facts and figures. So four of her headlines start with the word the, which is sort of weird. Like you don't really necessarily see a lot of headlines start with the word the. Uh, normally it's how to or you or you know something else. There's three articles where she began with you, your, or your, as in you are. In her top 15, there's three how-to articles, and there's also three times that she used the word things as sort of like the foundation of her whole headline. Every word is kind of connected to things. Uh, she also uses the phrase most important in a couple of her headlines, actually in two of the top three, I believe, headlines that she's ever written. Most important was a key phrase in there. So take that for what it's worth. Maybe you can, you know, use that in your own headline. Another kind of common phrase that kept coming up was I know, you know, to know. All have to do with no. You know, every, you know, and I really do think that when you're an author and when you write a headline, you really want to like communicate to the audience that you know exactly what you're talking about. Like you got to know this and it sort of like has this sort of confidence that the author has in the content. And for some reason, I just think that phrase really works out. So start doing that in your own headlines. Okay. So why do her headlines work? Like what is she doing from a psychological standpoint that's making people click? This is probably the most important part of this section. You really have to consider the top. Topic. Love is 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 a really really tough topic because a lot of people you know they, they're struggling in their relationships they're struggling in their romantic relationships we don't know why and we're trying to fix those problems so for Chris to sort of like calm the waves and tell us exactly what we need to hear that was really amazing and, and I think that's why a lot of people love to read her content okay so another thing that she uses is this sort of like you're wrong mentality where. She makes you question whether you actually know what you're talking about or not. Again, I don't think she's doing this on purpose. I just think that that's just how the headlines come out. So one of them is you're angrier than you think. And this is challenging what you think of yourself. When you see you're angrier than you think, you're like, wait, I am? Why? And then you want to figure out why. It's, it's almost like, oh, no, you're mistaken. You're actually angrier than you think. And it makes us question our own sort of like sanity in a way. Another thing is, it seems like she's talking right to you in her headline. How to know what you want. Signs they love you. Happiness is non-attachment. Your love isn't love. How you know if they're the one. It just seems like she's literally sitting across the table from you saying, look, your love isn't love. Happiness is non-attachment. I used to write those types of headlines all the time, by the way, but sort of gotten away from it. So let's talk about sort of like the images that she uses, her cover images. If you pay close attention to each and every writer on Medium, you see that they sort of have, they have tendencies. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. And Anthony Moore likes to feature lots of images of people working out, specifically women working out. 
Chris Gage, on the other hand, likes to feature lots of images of art. If you look at all of her articles, it's basically all just art, whether that's like painted on a wall, whether that's like, like an oil paint, I don't know. Like, but every single image is an art piece of some sort. So I think that's pretty cool. I don't think like you should just go out and start putting art pieces into your cover images. I'm just saying you need to be conscious of the cover image and you can start to become known for the cover images that you use. So let's talk about the structure of her articles now. So basically, there's a couple things that I saw her do that I think is important for you guys, but she likes bolding stuff. There's a lot of sort of paragraphs in her articles and then there's like a sentence in the middle of it that's bold, but it's not overdone but she does bold a little bit of, of, of stuff. And she also uses the quotes and the subtitles, everything to her advantage to make her posts look very, very dynamic. So it's not just, you know, like paragraph after paragraph and it all looks the same. No, she tries to mix it up with how she's actually uh, structuring her articles with subtitles, pull quotes, and bolded text, even italics as well. Another thing that I saw from her structurally was when she does a listicle, it's almost like she jumps right into the first point without an introduction. Like there's a couple times that she did that uh, in her top 15, actually three times to be exact. And I think that's that sometimes people get lost in the introduction and all that sort of stuff when they're writing a listicle. Like, look, we're just here for the list listicles are basically like the literary version of crack cocaine. Like we're just there to get the goods. Like we're not trying to like be wooed by you or anything like that as a writer. I, I just want to get the goods. I just want to uh, see your eight points and then I want to get the heck out of there. Another thing too is Chris really likes to flip the script or have that sort of like that statement right at the beginning of her post. And basically what the statement is, is it's something that's going to rock you to your core. It's designed to rock you to your core. And, and it's almost like in movies, you know, when you have an explosion at the beginning or like a James Bond movie, there's always like a huge action sequence at the start and it hooks you in, right? So like Chris Gage, she always has that statement or most of the time has that statement at the beginning where it's like, wow, I never really thought of it that way. But now that you said that, I, I need to read the rest of this. And I call it the statement. I call it that hook. And it almost always happens in the first like two sentences. And if not in the first two sentences, in the first two paragraphs or so. So let's talk about Chris Gage as a writer. Like from a broad standpoint, we talked about her headlines, her cover images, how she structures her articles. But let's talk about what she writes about. Like why is she so successful past the headlines, past how she structures stuff and past the sort of cover images that, she, that she's using. This is my favorite part of the video, by the way. So basically, you just have to think about what do you have to say that's actually different? Chris, I, I've never really th like thought about the things that she writes about when it comes to love. We all hear the same advice most of the time via articles on Medium, but she always seems to flip the script on us and show us a completely different side to things. You know, like I never thought that someone that doesn't text you back is actually like a good thing. And for her to flip the script on me in, in, in that one article that she wrote uh, was sort of amazing. A lot of this guys, and I, I honestly like can't stress this enough, a lot of great writing is just figuring out what you have to say that's new before you even write the post, before you write the headline or, or put in a cover image or you know get that structure down in the headline in, in the article itself or write the article. You have to just have that brilliant idea, um, that thing that nobody says enough that like, that you don't see enough of that pisses you off or, or that, that, you know, sort of like you just want to get out to the masses, but no one seems to know this. You have to figure out what that is. And you need, you need to really think about what you're writing about and like, think about what people aren't saying in your particular niche. Like for me with blogging, you know, I see a lot of people on WordPress, uh, you know, getting traffic via SEO, Pinterest, et cetera, et cetera. And they're just like playing this like numbers analytical game to get traffic. But it's like on Medium, you can write whatever the heck you want to write and you're not shackled to that SEO and Pinterest and all these ways to, you know, drive traffic. And I write about that. I'm like, why don't people, more people use Medium among other things? And I always try to find what people aren't saying because that's when you're really going to, you know, have an article go viral because when you give people something new, you know, it is like crack cocaine. It's like, it's like 
wow, like I didn't, I didn't think about that before. It's, it's like get opening up a, 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 a present at Christmas you totally weren't expecting. You know, that's always the one that stands out to you, and that's the one you're going to go tell your friends about. So I think that's so, so, so important. We could talk about headlines all day. We could talk about pictures all day. We could talk about the way that, you, the way that you structure a headline or style all day. But you need to really think about what other people aren't saying in your particular niche. If you're just saying what everybody else is saying, you might be able to find some success, but you're not going to be able to stand out from them. And Chris does that so, so well. She says what nobody else is saying. So it starts with you as a critical thinker. All good blog post starts with the author thinking about something or noticing something that nobody else notices. And make sure that you're doing that. Like if you're, you know, if, if you write about tech and if for some reason, you know, the iPhone is, you know, universally recognized as better than, you know, like, like a Samsung device or something, Write about why the Samsung device is better than, than the iPhone. You know, and I'm just giving you a very, very broad example. I, I, I don't know what I'm talking about when it comes to tech, but I'm just trying to give you an example. Like, you can always show the other side. And like, just because, like, like you have to sort of get into your own head. When you're writing, when you're reading an article you're, and, and you disagree with the, with the author, just be like, damn, like, I could, I could write a post about that. Um, so don't be afraid to challenge the status quo and you know, make waves. Um, I think that's super, super important when you're a blogger. Say what nobody else is saying. Another thing is, and this is my last point, like sometimes you need to write about topics that people are unsure about or that people care very, very deeply about. Chris Gage writes about love. Pe everyone who li who's lived on planet Earth knows what love is. We've all felt love. We've probably all had a girlfriend or a boyfriend or husband or wife, or we've been with a partner or whatever. Like we know what that feels like and we feel it so deeply. Love is like the most intense emotion that, that we could feel or the most intense thing that we can feel. So for Chris to write about love, she already has so many people that can relate to that and that want to learn more about how to get better at it. So I think that's important too, is the topic that you're writing. For me with writing, you know, it's tough for me to, you know, like, like, like get that, you know, be on that emotional trigger with people because no one really cares about writing too much. You know, there's a very little people that actually care about writing that much. But if I wrote about Donald Trump, oh my goodness, do you, do you, do you, oh, you don't even understand how many people would be all over that and want to read that because it's politics. Um, so, so love, politics, friendship, religion, all of these things, all these topics that are hard to write about, hard to talk about. These are the best topics to actually write about because you have a lot of people that, you know, sort of have strong feelings about it. And when people have strong feelings about something and when you're writing about that topic uh, and you're writing something that nobody else has, has thought about before, that's like a recipe for straight up success. And I think Chris is, she ha she, she's had a perfect storm of a lot of things. She knows how to write. She knows how to write headlines. She, she writes about something uh, that she clearly knows a lot about and that she has a different take on. And she cares about her audience. Um, I, I think that she really doesn't give a damn too much about, you know, the whole blogger marketing thing. Like she doesn't want you to sign up for her list. She just wants to, she just, she likes to write because she likes to write. And I just think that's so amazing. and. I admire that so much about her and, and you know, honestly, like when I talked to her, I was so, so nervous because, um, you know, she tells it how it is and I feel like she does not have time for BS, but that's not the truth. It's just she tells it like it is, but she's like also a, a very, very nice person as well. So I, I, I wanted to just quickly shout that shout her out and, and, and go over like what she's done. Um, and, you know, just from the outside looking in, you know, what I think that she does well. Uh, so let me know what you think of that, guys, if you want me to continue to make videos like this, uh, where I just like break down what a famous author on Medium is doing and, and what they do, you know, to gain more traffic, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, That was a lot of fun. And maybe I'll do, you know, Anthony Moore next time or Ben Hardy or something like that. And I'll show you step for step, like why I think they do so well. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I will talk to y'all later. Bye bye. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for new blogging tips every single week. I promise. And travel videos. I'm here in Bali, Indonesia right now. Bye bye.